Hi everyone. I wanted to give a health update. Health update. And also just share what God has been doing. Just share the goodness of God in um, all that's been going on in the last couple weeks over here. Um, I'm mostly recording this for myself and my kids so that I can remember and they can remember the goodness of God through trials. I was going to hold off on recording until I felt better, but I'm just very aware of the um, limited time that we have here on earth. And God knows the number of my days. Um, I don't. And I want to be a good steward of uh, the time that he's given me. And I don't want to put off um, for tomorrow what I could do today. So um, I just want to share while I'm in bed resting what's been going on and um, what God's been doing. Um, I don't think I'm going to die any time soon. But just that reality of how precious life is and how short it is really hit our family this week because my father-in-law passed away. And so in the midst of just some of the health stuff that I've been going through, um, he passed away. And so it, it just made me realize I really want to record this. And um, just... Um, I want to be able to give glory to God uh, for what he's done. I don't want to forget. I don't want my kids to forget the goodness of God in all of this. So the short condensed version um, is that I had a stroke um, and was in the hospital. And in figuring out why I had a stroke, found out that I have some other health issues as well, including a hole in my heart. So um, I will go into all that detail here in just a minute, but let me back up and share, um, kind of get you caught up to speed. Um, a few months ago, I had gone in to the doctor because my throat um, area was kind of swollen and it was really sore and I thought maybe I had swollen lymph nodes, you know, some kind of infection or something. And it turns out that my thyroid was enlarged. And so my doctor sent me, uh, put in for me to go to an endocrinologist. And um, I saw the endocrinologist. It, it took about three months or so for me to get into the endocrinologist. Maybe it was more like two months. But anyways, it was more than just a few weeks. It took a couple months to get into the endocrinologist and... Um, she acknowledged that, yes, the ultrasound showed that my thyroid was enlarged, but all my labs were coming back normal. And so she really couldn't help me or do anything for me. And I had been having just some other health issues that I've had for a long time kind of resurface. And I have spent a lot of time, a lot of money <laughs> to see a lot of doctors over the years. And so I was just praying that the Lord would help me know what to do because I want to be a good steward of the body that God has given me. Um, but I also want to be a good steward of my time and a good steward of our money. And it's expensive and it takes a lot of time to go to a lot of different doctors. So I was just praying about what the Lord would have me do next so that I could still be stewarding my body well, um, but also stewarding our finances and time well too. And so I decided with um, just prayer and talking to my husband that I would just try a functional doctor one more time. Um, I'd seen one in California and I felt like it was a waste of money, but I thought, you know, let's, let's pursue functional medicine um, here in Idaho and um, see what that turns up. And if it doesn't turn up anything and I am going to, oh, are you back girls? Okay. Okay. I don't know where I left off. Uh, my kids came back and I was just chatting with them. I think I was talking about 
pursuing functional medicine. So, um, I, like I said, I want to be a good steward of my body, but also a good steward of my time and um, the money that we have. And seeing doctors is expensive. So with some prayer and talking it over with my husband, we decided to just pursue a functional doctor here in Idaho and see if we can get any answers and any help for um, some of the health problems I've been having. And um, I just had a real peace that after this, I don't necessarily need to keep trying to pursue what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. If this, if this doctor can't figure out what's wrong, um, if we can't find answers, or maybe he can figure out what's wrong and I, we can't fix it. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay. I want to be a good steward of my body, but I think we've reached a point where if we don't get answers and I can't get help, then I'm just going to rest in knowing that this is what God has for me with my health. And I'm just going to look for ways that I can glorify him um, in the suffering. That um, I'm just going to remember that he's going to use all things for my good, including my suffering. So um, I didn't know what functional doctor to go with, prayed about it. One particular one kept coming up that maybe that was the one I should look into. I had Three different friends confirmed that that was a good one that they've used. And so I made an appointment on Tuesday. Let me get my dates right. Tuesday, July 11th, I think. Tuesday, July 11th, to meet with a functional doctor. Um, and so that was, that had been planned for a long time. Um... The Friday before that, so that would be, let's see, the 11th was Tuesday, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th. So I think Friday the 7th, I might be wrong on the dates, but um, the Friday before that, which I think was July 7th, um, I had a horrible migraine. Um, it was the worst pain I had ever experienced in my life. Uh, it started with my vision going blurry um, kind of having what they call an aura. Um, that's the medical term. Um, so kind of spotty, fuzzy vision. Moved into a headache and then into a full-blown migraine. I got tingling in my lips, tingling down my arms, um, nausea, um, all of that, all of that stuff. Um, but I have had this before, and before when I had it, I went to the hospital, um, and they said it was a migraine, and they did an MRI, and there was, it was just a migraine, they said. No stroke, no nothing, it was just a migraine. So I figured I'm just having another migraine. I, I don't like these migraines, but I'm gonna try to stay home and, and try to endure. Um, the pain, like I said, was the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. And I've given birth seven times, two times without any medication. So I would have rather given birth. I mean, of course, you'd rather give birth because you're going to have a child. But the pain of childbirth, I would have rather experienced over this migraine. It was the most horrific, excruciating pain I've ever experienced in my life. Um, and I just, I just prayed. <laughs> I prayed through it all. I'm so thankful for my husband who um, was able to care for me and comfort me and pray for me and pray with me and encourage me. Um, you know, he was just trying to rub my neck and my head to try to take some of the edge off of the pain. But God was with me through that pain. And I just want to share, the pain was excruciating, but yet... God was so faithful to carry me through it and to help me endure it. I remember at one point, the pain was so bad, I really couldn't even think clearly. But Psalm 23, which I think we all have memorized and is like engraved in our minds, that Psalm kept coming back to me, um, even though I couldn't think clearly. And I just said, Psalm 23, Sometimes in my head, sometimes out loud over and over and over again, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I would pray through that, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. God, you are my shepherd. You care about me. 
You are watching over me. You are with me. Um, you know, I shall not want. Lord, I do want this migraine to go away, but really, I really don't need anything but you, and I have you, and I know you're here with me, and I, I just, I prayed through Psalm 23. And then um, the other verse that, another verse that came to mind that I prayed through was um, 2 Corinthians. I'm going to read it here. Um, I have my Bible here. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And I just prayed through that. I, I, I said, Lord, help me not to lose heart, though my outer man is decaying and suffering. Would you help me not lose heart? Would you renew my spirit? And help me, Lord, in this momentary affliction that my eyes would be on your glory, the weight of your glory, Lord, and that my eyes would be on the eternal and not on the sufferings that I'm dealing with right now. And so I just remember I prayed through that verse as well. And then um, a verse that came to me was um, also while I was going through this was, um, I think it's Psalm 46, one. I might be wrong on the reference, but it's um, God is our refuge and our strength and ever a very present help in trouble. And I just kept saying that, Lord, you are my refuge and my strength. You are a very present help in the trouble that I'm feeling right now. And so I just, I prayed scripture. I said scripture. I was singing hymns um, in my head because <laughs> I didn't really have the strength um, to sing them out loud. And then I was focusing on the character of God and the pain. When the pain got so bad, um, I remember just saying, God, I know you're a God of mercy and have mercy on me. Just have mercy on me. I can't endure this apart from you. Have mercy on me. Uh, we're just thinking on the fact that God is our comforter, that the Holy Spirit that he's given us is given to us to comfort us. And just praying that God would be my comfort and my peace and my joy. And so just really focusing on the character of God and on scripture and pay, playing or praying it through scripture. And then the other thing that I had to do is what it says in 2 Corinthians, I think chapter 10 somewhere, about how we need to take every thought captive um, to the obedience of Christ. And I had to do that because I know that as the pain got intense, I had a thought of why God, why would you allow this again? Why, why are you letting me suffer like this again? And I just took that thought captive and I said, no, I'm not even going to go that way. I'm not going to go down that road because if I go down that road, it's self-pity, it's frustration, it's, it's going to only lead to me being angry at God, um, and sitting against God. So it's like, no, I'm going to take every thought captive. And so I took that thought captive and I immediately said, no, Lord, I am going to speak the truth to myself. Um, the truth from your word. And you promise, Lord, in Romans 8, 28 and 29, that is like my favorite. Those are my, that's my favorite passage of scripture, Romans 8, 28 and 29. In there, God promises that he will work all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that good is that we would become more like Christ. And so in that moment, I took that wrong thought captive and I said, Lord, you have promised that you will use everything for my good, that I would become more like Christ. That means this suffering. That means this horrible migraine that I'm experiencing. You're going to use to make me more like Christ. And then 
my next immediately immediate thought after that was I don't want to sin against God. Um, and so I just said, Lord, I, I prayed out loud. My husband was actually here with me and we just started praying and I, I prayed, Lord, do not let me sin against you in this pain and this suffering. Do not let me sin against you. Let my thoughts and the words out of my mouth be glorifying to you. Don't let me sin against my husband who's trying to care for me, but man, when you're in pain, Sometimes you get ir easily irritated with people who are trying to help because they're not doing exactly what you need them to do, but you can't communicate to them what you need them to do because you're in so much pain. And so I just was praying out loud with my husband, Lord, don't let me sin against you. Don't let me sin against my husband. Um, help me to take every thought captive. Help me to keep my eyes on you. Um, and Lord, let me just see who you are and you're the way you work, the way you are um, merciful and you are a God of comfort. Let me see that and experience that in this, this time of suffering and pain. And he did that. He did that. Um, he carried me through that pain. And so um, I wanted to share, share that because God is so good, even in our suffering. But we have to keep our thoughts in line with scripture. We have to take every thought captive. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord, on the things that are eternal and not on the things of this world. We have to keep our eyes on who God is, his character and what he has done for us. And we have to be meditating on scripture. And um, so I'm just so thankful um, that God brought the scripture to mind that he did. I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit, you know, bringing those scriptures to mind, helping to renew my mind, helping me to get my eyes on the Lord and thankful for them being, for the Holy Spirit being my comfort to carry me through that pain. So that was Friday. Um, and on Saturday when I woke up, I still had a headache, but it wasn't anywhere near like it was before. It wasn't a migraine. It was just a bad headache. Um, and I still had some lingering tingling around my mouth. Um, and previous times when I've had this migraine experience, I have not had lingering effects afterwards, but this time I did. But I didn't really think much of it because I'd already been experiencing some health problems before this and I just thought my body's exhausted. I just need rest. And so I was just gonna rest for the next week or two and then go back to life. But I had that doctor appointment with the functional doctor scheduled for Tuesday. And I am so thankful to the Lord that I had that appointment because it changed things dramatically from me just staying home and resting. Uh, I would not have known that I had a stroke. I would not have known that I had a hole in my heart. I would not have known that I probably have an autoimmune disease. I would not have known that there are several other things that I'm probably dealing with. Um, I would not have known any of that if I had not, if that functional doctor appointment was not a few days after the stroke. If it had been scheduled before the stroke, I would not have gone to the hospital um, if I hadn't scheduled it at all. I mean, God is just, I've just seen the sovereignty and goodness of God in, in, in this whole situation. So I went to the functional doctor. My husband went with me because I still wasn't feeling great, but he also went with me because he'd already planned on coming with me just to be, since this was kind of our last, um, the, we were thinking this is probably the last option for me to, in terms of getting help medically. And so he wanted to go and just be another set of ears and give his, you know, input because I forget things all the time about myself and he's, he's good at remembering those things. And so he went with me and the doctor met with us for an hour and, um, he was so thoughtful and kind and a good listener, and it was just such a blessing. But 
I mentioned my migraine. He noticed while I was there that I wasn't quite as steady on my feet. Um, I was a little wobbly and stuff. And so he encouraged us. He said, I think you might have had a stroke. And I really think you should go to the emergency room. And so um, I thought, this is a migraine. Like, I had a migraine like I had before. I'm fine. But um, he had really listened well. And, and so I wanted to do what he said. And I'm, I'm glad I did. So I asked him which hospital to go to. We have two big hospitals here where we live. Um, I asked which hospital and then which like specific one, like which location. And so we went, drove further than we normally would have. We passed a lot of hospitals on the way, but we went to the one that he recommended that we go to. And again, praise the Lord that the Lord had me ask which one we should go to because that hospital, when we got to the emergency room, that set of doctors that saw me and the nurses were amazing. Um, they listened, they cared. The hospital was packed, the emergency room was packed. Um, I ended up getting admitted to the hospital, but they didn't actually have a room for me, so I stayed in the ER. So they were full, but yet I felt like I got great care. Doctors that went above and beyond um, what they really needed to do. Even one of the doctors we thanked and, the, and he said, oh, you know, it, it's, it's the Lord. He, he gave praise to God for giving him the ability um, to do medicine. And so we just saw God's hand in all of it. But I got to the emergency room and the doctor, the functional doctor had called ahead to let them know that I was coming. And so I think that helped for me to get in to, um, you know, get in and stuff. Um, and they ran all kinds of tests. Um, and one of them was an MRI and it came back that I had a stroke. So that then triggered a whole bunch of other tests that they had to run to see why I had a stroke. And um, I'm just so thankful because one of the doctors just went above and beyond and really was like, man, you've seen a lot of doctors and you've never gotten any answers. And he's like, I really want to like cast a wide net and try to run as many tests as possible and help you kind of figure out what's going on. So I was very thankful for that. And, um, and so we got answers. Um, they found out that I have a hole in my heart, which is, um, what, you know, allowed the blood clot to get to my brain. Um, and they also discovered that I have a genetic disorder for blood clots, uh, for blood clotting. So um, I'll be seeing a doctor about that. <clears throat> but all that to say is we saw, I, I saw, my husband saw God working in just the amazing care that we received in the emergency room at this hospital. And again, all praise goes to God because he orchestrated it all in terms of the nurses that were there, the doctors that were there, the fact that I could even get a room after, you know, at first I had to just sit in a chair in um, the emergency room and they were able to get me a bed and then they were able to get me a room. So we just saw God working and he was just so faithful. He gave me such peace, um, that peace that passes all understanding um, that, you know, no matter what happened, it was going to be for my good um, and his glory. Um, you know, being in the hospital and thinking, I just had a stroke. There's a hole in my heart. I could have another stroke. I could not, I, I mean, I, I, I could die. I mean, that, that's a possibility. And just knowing, just having this peace that... I know the truth of God's word, that he promises to work all things for the good of those who love him who are called according to his purpose. So that means that he's going to work all things for my good. And if he takes me home to be with him, that was the best thing for me. And immediately, you know, start thinking about your kids. Like, well, what about my kids? Why would God take me from my kids? Which obviously he didn't. I'm still here. But, um, and this is something that I had thought about years ago when I had hemorrhaged in a miscarriage and so I already um had wrestled with this and 
just had confidence in God in, in that situation that if, if ever I were to die before my kids you know, were, were out of the house and done homeschooling and all of that, I realized that's for their good. It, it doesn't make sense to me, but it doesn't have to make sense to me. I don't, I'm not God. I don't have the mind of God. My God's ways, you know, the way he thinks is not how um, I think. And so I don't have the mind of God, but I have the promise of God that if my children are believers, then God is going to use everything, even the death of a parent, for their good would just become more like Christ. God will use it to grow them in their walk with the Lord. And um, there's a confidence that I have that if I have children who aren't saved yet, that God's going to use all of this um, to bring them to faith if God has um, so chosen to choose them um, unto salvation. So um I just, I just had such a peace in the hospital and, um, yeah, just a peace that only God can give that whatever happens, God's in control and, um, it's, it's for my good and it's for his glory. Um, so where are we right now? Well, um, I'm on, I got a heart monitor right here. So I'm on a 30 day heart monitor. So they're monitoring that. Um, I will be seeing a cardiologist. I will be seeing a hematologist. Is that what they're called? Blood doctor. Um, I think I'll be seeing a neurologist. Uh, I've got um, a wonderful lady who's just, she's just the, I mean, she's just the most caring person ever. Um, that is kind of like the advocate for me. I don't know. I don't exactly know what her title is, but she's kind of making sure that I'm getting all my appointments that I need and, um, communicating with me about what I need to do next and making sure that when labs come in, that she's talking to the doctors and finding out what needs to happen next and stuff. And so, um, I will be meeting with her too. And, um, I think like a month and a half or something like that, six weeks. Um, and then once we take care of all the heart stuff and figure all that out and, you know, make sure that I'm not going to be, well, as best that we can, not having strokes and stuff. Um, then the functional doctor will be working with me to help resolve some of the other things that I'm dealing with, including an autoimmune disease. So um, we see God in it because if I did not have that functional doctor appointment, I would not have known that I had had a stroke. I would not know that I have a hole in my heart. I would not have had all those labs run that have now shown that you know, I have other problems too. I I would have just I would have just rested at home and not felt great and kept going on. But I had that doctor appointment, um, and he told me to go to the ER. He told me which ER to go to. That team was wonderful there. They ran more tests than they normally do, and I'm getting answers. And so I just see God working in. Um, in all of it. And so I'm just so thankful. God is so good. He is so um, gracious and merciful to us. But yet, my hope is not in the doctors. My hope is not in an accurate diagnosis. My hope is not in them fixing me and making me better and healthier and not in pain and suffering and, and um, and all of that, that's not where my hope is. Um, those things would be wonderful, and I hope that those things come to pass, that I can find answers and get better, because I would like to be as healthy as I can be so that I can serve the Lord, um, including serving Him by loving my husband and my children and caring for them. Um, but that's not where my hope is. My hope is in Christ, and I know that Whatever he has for me, whether that's illness, suffering, pain, um, whatever it is, 
that he's going to use it so that his name would be glorified. And that really is my prayer. And one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video, even though I feel like I look terrible and I feel terrible and this is horrible video quality. Um, but I wanted to record this because I want what God has been doing to be made known. I want him to be glorified and I I want to be able to look back and remember all that God's done. Uh, I think sometimes God works amazing things and then we forget. We think, oh, I'll remember that and then we forget and I want to remember. I want to remember all the ways God has comforted me, encouraged me, provided, um, worked in his sovereignty to ordain events and doctors. I want to remember it all for his glory. And um, my hope is in the Lord because I know that God came to earth, took on flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, who walked or who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross to take the punishment that I deserved for my sins. He bore them on the cross. He died. He rose again. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And that he has given me the Holy Spirit to help me to know the scriptures, to understand the scriptures, to be my comforter, um, to convict me of sin. He's given me the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ not only paid for my sins, but he gave me his righteousness. So my hope is that I know that when I die, I will stand before the Lord and he will not see my sin, but the perfect righteousness of Christ because of what Christ did for me. That's my hope. My hope is that God has promised that while we will have suffering on this earth, he will be with us through it and that he will use it for my good and his glory. That's my hope. My hope isn't getting rid of suffering, physical suffering, financial suffering. My hope isn't that those things would disappear and go away. My hope is that while I'm here on earth suffering and going through trials, that God is with me and that one day I will be in the presence of the Lord and I will see my Savior's face. And I want the Lord to say, be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And I want to live a life of obedience to Christ so that he would be glorified. And a life of obedience to Christ is not to earn my salvation. My salvation is done, it's paid for, it's secure in Christ. My works, my obedience to Christ is done out of a changed life. I'm a new cre creature, the, the old is gone, the new has come. My heart of stone has turned to a heart of flesh that now desires to want to obey the Lord and bring glory to him. I don't do that out of works. I do that because that is my desire because that's the desire that God puts in us when we become his children. And so um, my hope is in the Lord and I know that Time on earth, even if I live to be a hundred, is still just a blink of an eye in terms of eternity with the Lord. And I, I look forward to that. I hope that I have many, many, many years um, left on this earth to be able to bring glory to God and to proclaim the gospel and to encourage believers and to bring the lost to Christ. 
um, but only God knows the number of my days. And so my prayer is that each and every day that the Lord gives me that I would use it wisely. I'd be a good steward of the time that he's given me and that it would all be for his glory. And um, so I just wanted to share that mostly for for myself to remember and for my kids to have and to look back on at what God has done and the goodness of God. Um, the peace that passes all understanding that uh, makes no sense, but yet I have such a great peace. And um, so I pray that if you're listening to this, that you um, have turned to Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and that you have been given um, that peace that passes all understanding, um, and that you too can have the hope of eternal life in the Lord's presence and with our Savior.